Number 41. A 13.0% solution of K2CO3 by mass has a density of 1.09 grams per centimeter cubed. Calculate the molality of the solution. Okie dokie. So, um, we need to find the molality. There's really only one formula for molality, and that basically is this formula right here. There it is. So let's just put this up here for now. Now, in order to find the molality, keep in mind that molality is the lowercase italics m. So whenever you see a lowercase italics m, that's the molality. Don't get that confused with the capital M, which is molarity. Molality is always equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. But they only gave me a percent here, right? And it's a percent by mass. So maybe I can use this information to kind of compartmentalize how much solute and how much solvent I have. So enter now this formula, your percent mass formula. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put this one on the bottom because we're not really using it now. So percent by mass and any percent in general is always equal to a part divided by a whole times 100. Solute is a part of a whole entire solution. And the solute is the little substance that is placed in a solvent and the whole together, the solute plus the solvent equals the solution. Now they told us that we had a 13.0% by mass solution of the K2CO3. So we know that we have 13.0 equals something over something times 100. But they didn't tell me specifically how many grams of the solute I have or how many grams of the solution. But we can use our knowledge of math to get a ratio that will make sense to equal to 13. For example, this times by 100, I don't want that anymore, right? I wanna cancel this out so that I can just equal to 13. And technically this 100 is over one. So if I wanna cancel out a 100, I would have to put this in the denominator because four divided by four, that gets canceled. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. A five divided by five, a divided by a, it does not matter. So in order to get this 100 out of here, I will put it on the bottom. So maybe I'll just put 100. And now that correlates with the grams of the solution because the solution is always the total. And that's how the 100 will cancel out with the 100. But if I'm left with 13.0, what do you think the number would have to be on the top? Yeah, it's the only number that's not canceled, right? Because the left side of an equal sign has to be equal to the right. And that's the 13. So I have 13 grams of my solute. And maybe what I'll do is just to color code this, I have 13.0 uh, grams of the solute. Okay. We're getting somewhere because now we realized that from that percent, we have 13.0 grams of the solute and a collective 100 total grams of the solution. So let's just write that out. We have 13.0 grams of the solute and we have um, 100 grams of the solution. Now keep in mind, we still wanna find out that molality. We're getting close because now we have a solute number, but we still don't have a solvent number. But if the solution is the total, and the solute is only a little part of the solution, what would we be able to do with these numbers to find out the solvent? Yeah, we would subtract because solution always equals the solute plus the solvent. So if I have 100 grams and I have that equal to the solute, which is 13.0 plus X, I can subtract 13 on both sides 
to get my total grams of my solvent. So 100 minus 13 is 87. I have 87 grams now of my solvent. And now we have a solute number and a solvent number that we can use to find the molality. Well, let's see. For the solute, I want moles. So I can go from grams to moles. I just need to know the compound of my solute. Now keep in mind that they did say that it was a 13.0 gram, a 13.0% solution of K2CO3. This mass percent is always going to be in reference of the numerator, which is the solute. So we know that that K2CO3 is the solute. And now we can go from the 13 grams of the K2CO3 and go to moles of K2. CO3 because I need the moles of the solute. Now grams to moles of the same substance, that's going all the way back to the beginning of chem, right? If I want to, if I have the grams and I want to get to the moles, all I have to do is just divide by the molar mass. So let's just quickly go on the periodic table to find out the molar mass of K2CO3. You have two potassiums, and each potassium weighs 39.10 plus one carbon, which is 12.01, plus three oxygens, which is 16. So two times 39.1 plus the 12.01 plus six times, or th three times 16. Um, all the numbers look good to me. Let's press enter. And I'm gonna take my 13 grams and divide it by 138.21. 13 divided by this number, and we get 0, 0.0, we'll give it a couple of numbers, 0 0.0941, I guess 0, 06, that's good. Okay, so moles of the solute, check. Now, I need the kilograms of the solvent. Well, maybe what I'll do, let me just move this over a little bit. That's good. We just found out that we had 87 grams of the solvent. We need the kilograms. So I can just go from grams to kilograms. Right, grams to kilograms is always just dividing by 1,000. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it over to the left three times. So this would be 0 0.087 kilograms of the solvent. I got the moles of the solute. I got the kilograms of the solvent. Let's find out that molality. Molality equals the moles of the solute, 0 0.09406 divided by the 0 0.087. Molality equals or I'll just put the number, I guess. So we'll use this number divided by the 0 0.087. Right? That looks good to me. Press enter. Yay! Um, looks like we need three sig figs. So say 1.08 units. You could just put the nice little squiggly molality, lowercase m. And that's it. Now for all of you that are screaming at me, and saying, Christina, we didn't use the density. So, <laughs> sometimes they will give you more information than necessary. They said percent by mass, so it was grams to grams. Generally, if you're using a density value, you have a volume unit, but they gave you a percent by mass, so everything was in mass units for you. Everything was in grams. There was no need to use the density to, uh, you know, convert. So just watch out, always trust yourself. Trust yourself, trust the units, and just keep flowing with it, okay? So sometimes they will give you more information than they need, especially temperature. In some, in some chapters, um, they'll just throw random temperatures at you, pay no mind, all right? So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you with more. 
And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, tell your classmates, maybe tell your teachers or professors <laughs> um, about this channel. Just gets the word out there. And I hope you're doing well. Keep studying hard and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.